join Deborah Jane East for Sky Watchers, a show for the UFO enthusiast. Sky Watchers is on ELR.FM. Check out the schedule for the live show by going to ELR.FM. That's EngageLifeRadio.org. Sky Watchers with Deborah Jane East. Looking for a good time? ModernLoveBooks.com The one place to find that special book for that special time. ModernLoveBooks.com Thank you for being a part of the Engaged Life family. Welcome home. You have been listening to Sky Watchers with Deborah Jane East. Contact us, skywatchers, facebook.com, or Alien Chronicles for more information. Okay, we're back with Ted Mabbitt, and I would like to ask you, Ted, what do you think you would do if you're doing a CE5 expedition and you actually have a landing? Have you thought that out? What would you say? Yeah, um, you know, we, we discussed this a little bit amongst um, in the group and also, you know, kind of w- listening to what other people have experienced with, with that. Um, you know, again, the peaceful intention and the open heart thing are something that you want to keep in mind the whole time um, you're doing it. And, and, you know, you need to realize, too, we talked about fear earlier. There's really nothing to be afraid of. There's you know, we can get into abductions, and, and I can tell you all about what I really think that's all about, but there has been, at least as far as, you know, Greer's been doing the C, uh, C5 stuff for, for like 20 years now, uh, maybe more, maybe a little bit less, I don't know, a long time. They've been doing tons of expeditions, tons of CE5s out in every place imaginable all over the world. Not once have they had a negative experience, like somebody getting pulled up out of the ground, like, whatever that guy in fire <laughs> the sky, which, you know, you talk oh, yeah. to him, and he said, yeah, that's not exactly how it went, but that's how they wanted it for the movie, because they needed yeah, to Yeah, that's it how they portrayed it. You that know, was the all, Travis all Walton the e. story. Movie. Right, exactly. All the E.T. movies that come out since the movie E.T., basically, well, with the exception of Avatar, have been putting E.T.'s in a negative light, because they want us to be afraid of them. Okay, because the fear factor thing is, Caleb mentioned, you know, touched on it, fear equals control. Anyway, I guess what we, we would do is that we wouldn't, you know, you don't want to rush, you don't want to go running towards the craft that might scare them off, for one thing. They, you know, try to connect to them through your heart, through your through your inner, you know, your inner voice, and, and just see what happens. Maybe stand, put your palms outward so that, they know that we have are there with peaceful intentions, and let them make the move. Let you know it's really up to them. When part of the protocol is that we invite them to 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 join us in any way that they see appropriate and safe for them, because there's a lot of evidence showing that they've been targeted over the years. You know, starting with Roswell, for that matter, and. We don't want to put a weird vibe on them or, or, or get too overly excited, although, of course, it's easy to say, you know, you got a UFO land in front of you 100 feet away. It's going to you know, it's gonna be like la 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 di da right? It's going to be pretty yeah. exciting. Your <laughs> heart's going to be pounding more than likely. Um, I would be jumping know, around, I mean, that's for sure. <laughs> you know, if I could just quickly reference uh, an experience that, that the three of us had, I think it's appropriate because it, it was the three of us that are that you're talking to right now, plus one other gentleman, John, um, who had a very, pre- it was probably my most profound experience uh, out at Sibbets Flat uh, during a CE5, as during the government shutdown, there was nobody out there. It was very dark and and we went through the protocols and the meditation, and within minutes, uh, we started seeing, I guess, what you, how Taylor described what they saw in Washington. It was just a beautifully, beautifully bright uh, star-like uh, objects that started to appear. Um, we had basically four, well, three, three individual sightings within 
um, within 10 minute, a 10 minute time span. Now this is all on the audio recording that we have posted on our Facebook page, which we just finally got up. If you go to facebook.com slash forward slash CE5 San Diego, there's an audio recording you can listen to. But just to give you a little quick little background so you kind of know what you're listening to, we all face a different direction so that the entire sky is covered. And then you'll start to hear it about uh, 29 minutes in. Um, that's when it starts to happen and big time. And you can just hear the excitement in our voices as we're observing these craft and the the real the real confirmation one for me though was the second one where it was two lights that appeared and uh, I mean we we were there during the day of course too and we realized that they were really not that far away um, maybe a thousand yards maybe two less than a mile I would say and these two lights were traveling uh, without sound. It was windy, but we would have heard them if they were jets because they were quite low. Perfectly bright white lights that were completely, perfectly spaced apart from each other. Like, they, they were traveling across the sky. If they were two jet fighters, they would have wandered slightly from each other. These were perfectly together like they were one craft, but you could see the stars in between them. And as they traveled across, I mean, you, we all got this. So they were totally feeling. in sync is what you're saying. They were in sync they with each totally other. They were totally in sync with each other. They were perfectly in sync flying across the sky. But not only that, it was just the, the, how beautiful they were. The, it, it's, a, it's a white light. It's a beautiful white light that you will, you'll know the instant you see it. You know, um, so we got a really great light show that night. But as Peter mentioned, it, there's a lot more to it than that. It's more than a light show. It's connecting to them on, on, on a deep level um, and developing relationships with them um, that will probably last for the rest of our lives. And they can manifest. And I hope people ways. will listen. I hope people will listen to it because I actually listened to it myself. And honestly, guys, the hairs raised up on my arm. It was just so thrilling. Oh, me too. And it yeah, just I, like I, I was so it. envious. Yeah, well, we didn't expect anything that night. I mean, I was like, okay, here we are, four crazy guys. Nobody <laughs> there. We didn't. I, really, I, was, yeah, I didn't expect anything until I, you know, like, oh my god, they're showing up before we're there. What's going on? <laughs> I know. How's how's that? Because you know. A lot of times you wait and wait and you don't see anything, but that I think it goes back to what you said, Peter, about manifesting what you want to see. And I think they knew they they knew the schedule, what was going on, because right after the appearance, you know, the border patrol shows off, and the and then the, uh, the the air traffic shows off. Uh, it was weird. I think they already knew ahead of time. Well, and the contact oh, protocols. You use light, you use sound and oh, yeah. thought. And I think that is the most underlooked tool that we have, is that we, that our thought is used to be able to contact. Um, yep. Caleb, I would like don't to ask you. Them. Oh, true. Yeah, don't underestimate them. It's like... You know, our minds are like an open um, radio station where they can hear, you know, what we're thinking and, and what we're projecting. Uh, Caleb, uh, we're, we're, we have a few minutes left, and I would like you to tell uh, our audience, what do you hope the future of CE5 brings to um, the powers to be? What do you want them to say about CE5? Because I'm sure they have other means and things they're doing, you know, in case we have ET contact. But what what do you think the message is to them? Um, to free the people, to free our minds, uh, to um, one create the dialogue. <laughs> I think that uh, it's very important that our leaders. Uh, you know, lift this embargo of. I was of, hoping you would uh, say that. <laughs> What's that. Yes, I was hoping you would say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, exactly. Uh, the power of the mind is not something to underestimate. Uh, we, you have all the tools that you could ever need in order to, um, 
reach, you know, that enlightenment. Yeah, we're not helpless. So that we can transcend into a higher form of being, a higher understanding of universal love. And uh, I think that that's the message, you know, is that there's this divine light of love that is involved in our reality, but it's sometimes the hardest thing to see when times are so tough. And it, yes. and it seems like, you know, uh, the heartache's never going to end. But, you know, when you realize that we're all in this together and we truly are one and the power of the people is, you know, more powerful than <laughs> than anything, yeah. you know, the light. In we're not helpless. Community. We're not helpless like, you know, mm-hmm. that we're being made to believe. Uh, Ted, I want to give you a minute to give your final thoughts, and then we'll go to Peter. I just want to say that Caleb just nailed it, nailed it right on the head right there um, with his statement. Um, you know, it, it is about that. And, I mean, this is just a wonderful thing that, that that's going on. I, I, I am so encouraged by how how this movement is growing you know, and, you know, for those of you out there, they're still kind of like, well, you know, what is this all about? Are these guys like some kind of cult or something? We're not like those guys that are going to hop on the ship, you know, after the hail bop on it comes. <laughs> Remember that guy? Wasn't that a trip? Yes, <laughs> I do. Yeah, we don't, we don't wear, you know, all the same Nike sneakers and wear purple And you don't have tinfoil hats on. <laughs> no, we don't. We don't no have tinfoil hats, hats like from Signs. Like we are, we all come from diverse backgrounds. We're all just like normal people who have had profound experiences, and we're seeking the truth, and we're seeking to better ourselves and humanity. And this is really important work. You can't underestimate the the, the importance of what we're doing. We certainly don't, and we take it seriously. But like I said, we have fun. We it, it's important to have a lighthearted mind as well. I think just in life not take life too seriously. Sometimes I found myself doing that, and this has really helped. And finding this group of people who have the same desires, you know, and we just want to continue the work. We want to continue to see our, our group grow with like-minded people, um, you know. So please contact us through Facebook if you're interested in, if you're in the San Diego or Southern California area and would like to join us. We do have a a little bit of a kind of an interview process. It's not because we're elitist or whatever. It's just that we want to make sure that you're coming from the same place um, of, you know, of non-fear, um, you know, uh, and that you have the, the same intentions. And we would love to join, have you join our group. So And I hope, I hope everybody welcome. will do that. I seriously Absolutely. do because I think they will be uh, pleasantly surprised. And, Peter, I want to wrap up with you. Uh, I do want you to share just briefly. You're very excited because you're adding someone new to your group, and you want to tell everybody what his talent is, and then you can tell us uh, if you have any contact info. Well, a new one is from Costa Rica. He has actually had contact on Costa Rica, and him and his partner has moved up to San Diego just to make CE5 contact with us. I, I find that rather flattering. So he already has uh, experience with it. Uh, we have another one um, from L.A. who actually drove all the way down here to be interviewed. Um, he, his talent is, I think, security within the system. Uh, you need a security guy to watch the group from the outside to make sure there's no interference or other people coming in. Um, we have another woman uh, just applied today. I don't know what exactly what's going on with her yet, but... We'll find out later on. It's good to have a good pool of people because the core can change. It can grow to nine. It can shrink to three. It's very dynamic. And what's so good about this group is there is no leader. I could be gone. Chuck could be gone. Anybody could be gone, but it still will continue on. It has a life that's all that's organic. It's, it's sustainable. Um, I can see other groups like this going on. It's like Occupy. Occupy the Cosmos. Wow, I like that. Maybe you just created a new little saying since our other one come out of the UFO closet got taken. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Occupy the universe. That's really cool. You are good at coming up with stuff like that, Peter. And and um, <laughs> how can they contact you? 
Oh, contact us through the Facebook page that Ted created for us. Thank Dr. Ted. Um, it's C5 San Diego um, Facebook. And I hope you'll continue to put your expeditions on there. And uh, I'd like to get a shout out to one of your other team members, Olga, who was going through some training, but we'll have her on at a later date. She has some special talents that I would like to highlight. And once again, you guys, you're phenomenal. I think your uh, group will have much success, and I hope you'll keep us informed of what all is going on in the future, and I plan on having you back again. So thank you, Peter. Thank you, Ted. And thank you, Caleb, for a wonderful uh, view of the CE5 experience. Thanks, everyone, for joining Skywatchers, and we'll be back next week at the same time with more exciting events going on in the skies. You have been listening to Sky Watchers with Deborah Jane East. Contact us, skywatchersfacebook.com or Alien Chronicles for more information. Thank you for being a part of the Engaged Life family. Welcome home. <laughs>